What's up guys and welcome back to Legend of Aston Villa. Today I'm joined with Brad and we're going to be reacting to the Nottingham Forest game yesterday which finished Villa 2, Forest 1. So Brad, I know it wasn't the best performance yesterday but three points is all we needed. Oh yeah, definitely. Uh, like I said, his first back-to-back -back -back win since April. It's the first of the season, so it's uh, it's good to get get it going. And hopefully, like I said, I think we want unbeaten in seven. I think it is now something like that uh, um, in the league, anyways, not including the cup. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, so it's uh, it's 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 good. It's, it's what we needed to be fair, and it was quite scrappy. After a really bad start in the league, I think we'll all all come out and say that it was a pretty bad start. The, the, now the Bruce has got him going, we really need to kick on, like you said. And now, only two points from the playoffs. It's really yeah. something to kick on and go for. Yeah, that's right, yeah. And it's seven points, I think, because I think the leaders dropped some points there, I think. I'm up to 10th, which, you know, I think we would have took that a couple of weeks back. Yeah, definitely. And, and we've still got kind of weaker opponents to come as well. No disrespect to the teams that we've got. But with, with these teams, you expect us to at least put two or three past them. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, um, like I say, because he's Mark Warburton, and he's quite a good manager. To be fair, yeah. I mean, like he nearly got Brentford up. So yeah, and he's quite a good, uh, good manager. And uh, Forest is a quite a good unit, to be fair. And they set up well today as well. I thought, you know, just a little shout out to them. I thought yeah. they did, you know, they they made it hard for us, and they were pushing buttons, our buttons at certain points of the game as well, especially in the first half and towards the end of the well, most of the second half, to be fair. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I thought it was. Uh, I thought I thought it was quite. Uh, I wouldn't say it's the best of games. I think for like a neutral fan, I don't think it was one of the best games I'd see. No. Uh, but yeah, you were just glad we've come away with three points, to be fair. Going to the game in the first half, nothing really happened until the goal came, which was an absolute great pass by Kodja. I can't, can't actually believe it got to Adoma. Um, and it, the the coolness of Adoma to round the keeper was there and tap it in was fantastic that's three goals in two games for him and really showing why he should be in the first team because he did seem like he was nowhere a couple of weeks ago and now he's really fermented that place at left mid which is really not his own position no yeah definitely i think it's come like a bit of a grace uh for god for him to say Grealish is out injured i think that's what's uh what's helped him out a little bit to be fair um but yeah like you say it was good composure to you know go around the keeper as well because i i, I would probably put money on uh, at least a couple of our strikers wouldn't have done that and yeah. missed it or hit it straight at the keeper. So, yeah, in that situation, I was quite glad it fell to him. More so uh, over over the strikers, in all fairness. Kodja did have a, uh, a very um, packed game. He, he did have a few, few chances. I think one of them he really should have scored, but he, he kind of hit it straight away and the keeper saved it. Adoma had another chance, but put it miles over. There was a, we were making chances, but maybe not... Um, taking them to the best of our chances. I mean, Forrest were getting closer and then we sat back a little bit and tried to soak up the pressure, which then worked until half-time and then half-time came and then Forrest came out quite well. They came out quite attacking. They, they had a lot of the ball um, in the first half anyway and, and they had a lot more in the second overall than us. And then Murphy storms through the mid midfield of Wheeling and then through the defence and then puts it into the into the corner, and it's one one. Just like the game against Bristol City, the heads didn't drop, and we kept kept at it. And Hurahan scored an absolutely great free kick. I thought, really an error to the wall, uh, to be honest, because the wall should have been at least two yards to the right. But we don't mind. It's in the back of the net. Hurahan scores, and that's five for him this year so far. Yeah, definitely. Just to mention on Adama, right? he's, he's matched his last season's uh, tally in, in two games for us. Because he had three last season and he's got two. So uh, Sorry, he had three three last seasons, had three in the last two games for us. So, you know, we must be doing something right. And um, But yeah, like you say, he's just for the end of the uh, first half, like you say, he's apart from uh, the clean cut chance. The only, the only clear cut chance I saw was uh, when Davies made a nuisance of himself and Adoma should have really scored his second. Mm -hmm. um, that was like towards the end of the first half. Um, and then the second half, like you say, he's come round and it was... Uh, it, it was it was nearly two one um, with a block coming off the back of like Johnston's back foot like his foot from off the back and he nearly went in for two one so I was quite uh, quite quite shocked with that but yeah like you say he's Hurhan he was quite slow to be fair he was quite a slow game and and to be fair to Forrest they did start to take control of the game I yeah, saw before Hurhan yeah. Hurhan stepped up and he scored that well thing um, it was I I was begging and pleading for it to go in because it just oh, yeah. didn't look like. Um, you know, it was such a good good goal, but I I, I genuinely didn't think see our strikers scoring. 
uh, today, and I, I, I just, I, it didn't even feel like there was any like clear chances for the strikers to score. Whether it was Hogan when he come on, Codger who played, him, but he seemed to be quite frustrated as well. But yeah, like you say, it was it was a great free kick. But yeah, he was just a little bit concerned about the strikers because. Um, I'm not too sure if it's if it's down to the strikers or the creative players because to be fair, you know we've probably got the most creative midfield in the league, so I don't think we can keep using that excuse, um, you know, to say there's not enough creative players and so on. But I'm not quite sure what's what's going on with the with the strikers at the minute. Well, Kodja did seem to be running like his socks off today. He was running, trying to make runs, yeah. and wasn't being found. There was a penalty appeal actually. I think it was in the first half from Davis. Um, That's right. Yeah. Going down. For me, it's a bit of a 50-50 one. The referee could give it, and obviously he couldn't. And the referee didn't give it, which at that point would it would have put us in the driving seat at two 0 But uh, for me, it's 50-50. I, I I wouldn't want to say because um, I didn't want, don't want to be, really be biased and say oh yeah it's definite penalty. Uh, but I think the referee was right to kind of give it, and then like going to the second half, um, just touching on what you said, the last really twenty minutes was really all Forest. They had a lot of yeah. the ball, they had a few chances of blocked. Um, the, the Johnson made a great save from the free kick. Oh yeah, uh, brilliant! For five brilliant. minutes to go, I think it was great um, right-handed, one-hand right-handed <laughs> save. From as soon as the board went up for four minutes, it just seemed like it would go to Bruce Ball or keep it in the Forest half. Yeah, like you say, just to go back on what you said about the penalty, I personally thought Davis was looking for it more than uh, an actual being a foul. I thought the one that was definitely a foul was the was, oh, Matt Mills uh, pulling Terry shirt, nearly ripped it off his back. It was it was that much. Um, I thought that was going to. I thought if anything, that was going to be the penalty. But yeah, like you said about Johnston, he, he, to be fair, he had no right to save that ball. Uh, he was going top corner, and yeah. um, he had. To be fair, it was if somebody. I'm not trying to, you know, make him as big as De Gea, but if De Gea pulled that off, it would be like repeated non-stop. Yeah. Um, and I personally thought it was a, a, a superb save, and yeah, he like I say, he had no right to get that because he, it's top corner. I mean, you, not many get saved from there. Just before we get to the player ratings, I would just like to say I did get the uh, score prediction right in the preview, uh, so I'm not trying to. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so going into the player ratings, we'll start off with Sam Johnson. For me, he's going to get an 8, simply because he made vital saves at the right time, and unfortunately, even though he did concede, it was still a good game. Yeah, I've given him a 9. Um, I've, I've personally given him my man of the match. Um, I thought he... I know we had two goal scorers, um, but I, I thought that he was more vital for us than I thought the actual goal scorers were, um, because, yeah, I mean, it, it could have easily been a few. Um, in all fairness to Forrest, like I say, there was somewhere he, he made himself big and he pulled off some top saves. So it's a nine for me and he's my man of the match. It's going into the defence for me. I've actually given all the defenders six. Taylor uh, played OK. He, he didn't really play well going forward, unlike the last game. Um, defensively, he was OK. Chester the same. Defensively, was quite strong. Terry... Got himself in a few battles with a few of the other centre backs of Forest, especially on corners and receiving corners. And Al Mohamedi wasn't the best yet again. Probably needs to beat his man a little bit more. And but yeah, the defence was quite solid. But even though they did concede, um, I'd, pro I'd probably go a bit higher. I'd probably go sevens across the board. Um, like you say, it was pretty much going forward. I didn't think they helped as much as usual. Yeah. Almo is one of them players where he's either on form and he's crossing, everything's going into the box and it's all whipping everything in or it's just nowhere to be seen going forward. And I think that's when uh, Bruce moved, took Snodgrass off and put Hutton at right back and moved Almo yeah. forward. I think that was the reason behind that because I don't think he was doing as much as he wanted from the full-back position, which, you know, it's one of those... Um, but yeah, I thought seven across the board. To be fair, uh, Terry, yeah, he, like I say, for their goal that Murphy scored, he was him and Whelan. I thought was at fault for that because he did just brush past him. And I know Terry's got no pace, so if we have a quick wing, uh, quick player. I don't expect him, you know, to be, you know, on him and chase him like a rabbit. But when it comes to you know a sort of one-on-one -on -one challenge with any striker, I expect him to step up to the plate. Yeah, you know, because he's he's you know he's. You know, we keep mentioning how much he's done in the past for Chelsea and so on. So you'd expect him to to be able to cope with somebody. No disrespect to Murphy, but he's not exactly the best stroke in the league. 
um, and he, he, he pushed him off, you know, and um, like I say, for the corners and things, he was more of a nuisance for the defenders for their corners yeah. than he was for, you know, the forest strikers at our end. So, yeah, I thought he was he was more attacking than he was defending, unfortunately. But, yeah, Chester had a, a, an OK game, nothing amazing, but he did OK. And like I say, Taylor just gets one decent shape where he, uh, he did a decent block um, towards the end of the second half, I think it was, and he stopped, stopped them having a shot on target. Yeah, definitely. And it's a shame that we can't really take corners properly because we never seem to find anyone. Going into the midfield, Albert Adoma on that left-hand side, yet again, we've already mentioned how well he's been playing recently. For me, he's my man of the match, he was Sky's man of the match, and I think he's actually the fan score out's man of the match as well. I'm going to give him an 8, and I know it maybe it should be a 9, but I just didn't think the team overall didn't play as well as we have seen. Uh, he took his goal very well, he played very well. He did waste a few chances with taking, taking for the shot sometimes. Uh, but yeah, he, he some and again, he probably should beat his man a lot more instead of just cutting back, whipping it. Just try and beat the man and try and make something of it. Yeah, for me, I've given him an eight um, because I don't see my man of the match at nine, so pretty much everyone else is going to be less. Um, but he, yeah, he got his goal, but then he seemed like you say he he went from being sort of creative and trying to whip the ball in to trying to keep shooting. Yeah. And I don't know if that's what the frustration was with Kodja because he, he, Kodja was kicking off towards the end before he got subbed. He was uh, slamming his hands and all sorts going on. Um, but yeah, Kod, he, he, yeah, like you say, he should be beating his man a lot more. But yeah, there was more. Uh, uh, he was more of an attacking threat than uh, you know a supportive threat, which we kind of need that support, especially playing with the two up front. Yeah, definitely. Going to centre mid, Whelan to start off with. I thought he played quite well. I thought. Um... Not the best of his performances, but it, it did seem like he was getting a little bit barged off the ball quite easily. There's a lot, a few mistakes, um, but I'm gonna give him a six. Yeah, six as well. Like I say, he was at fault for the goal uh, with with Terry. I thought because yeah. um, he did sort of pass the ball to Murphy as well, which I know was an accident. It wasn't, uh, you know, on purpose or anything. But uh, yeah, he was six. And he did start and he started doing his usual running in water. Towards the end, he was dying on his feet, and I think this is where we need to have when Yedinak's fully fit. I'm not saying Yedinak should be playing every match, but it'd be just nice to have one or the other on the bench. So when they start getting tired legs, because they are quite old players, but, oh, yeah. you know they are vital for what we what we need this season. Um, so yeah, I think you know I think it just shows the lack of depth we've got in that sort of holding midfield position. To his partner Kara Hurahan, the second goal scorer, for me he's going to get a seven. Played quite well throughout the game. I thought some mistakes here and there. It seemed like that was across the whole board, really. Uh, his passing was okay, and he scored a great free kick. So seven. Yeah, if it wasn't for the free kick, I'd have given him a six as well. But because he's got the free kick, a goal gets you a uh, an extra point, so it would be a seven <laughs> for him. Um, yeah, and apart from the free kick, I've, I've genuinely forgot he was playing um, because he did nothing of any note. Again, and um, but yeah, like I say, he's quite he's a dead ball specialist, and I think that was one of the reasons why we did sign him to be fair because we haven't got anybody like that. Um, so yeah, so it'd be a seven for me as well. And finally, for the midfielder, Robert Snodgrass on that right hand side for me, I had a very quiet game, not the, the best of his performances that we've seen so far. Um, another player, he, he seems to really have quite low ball control skills. It just it seems like he he loses the ball quite quickly um, in some some in some places, but overall he played an okay game. He didn't do anything special. He didn't create anything really. So yeah, six I think was right. Um, I've given a bit hot. I've given a seven. I thought he did quite well tracking back and helping Elmo out on the. Uh, down the side, I thought he did track back a few times to help out. I thought defensively he was quite well. I thought he was probably the best cross of the ball we had of the day. Um, he did put some balls in into the box. No one was uh, anywhere near him, but they were into the box, and there was in the six-yard box, and there was nobody attacking it. Um, you know, which I can't, I can't blame him for, to be fair. Um, but yeah, like I say, he's, he, he, he was like I say, he, he put some teasing balls in. And he defended, you know, he, he tracked back quite well, but that was pretty much... Yeah, then for up front, we have Jonathan Codger. For me, I'm going to give Codger an 8. The runs that he was making were unfortunately not found most of the time, and he did get the assist for Adoma's goal, which was a great pass. 
But like you said, I think Kojin really needs to calm down a little bit more and stop kind of throwing his weight around a little bit and having a bit of a tantrum. Uh, otherwise, I, I think he'd, he'd play much better and probably even score. But yeah, like I said, I'm going to give Kodra a 7. Um, yeah, Sorry, I'll give him a 7. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, I thought you changed. Um, yeah, so I'll give, I'll give him a 7. Uh, he did make some good runs, but like I say, he, 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 he did sign, he was trying to be a bit... Arrogant, I thought he was trying to do some. You know, he kept trying to turn the player and things, and you know, he didn't really need it. You know, just to the basics have been fine. And like I said, he kept falling back deep, then he was attacking, and then and then there was a part that I didn't really like where Davis was running towards the ball because it was his side of the the pitch. Yeah. And to put up and took it, and I was like, there was there weren't no real need. And I understand he's frustrated because he's been injured and he he wants some game time and he wants to get you know I, I get all that, but at the same time he's still part of a team. And um, yeah, like it, it did seem to be quite greedy as well. Like I said, I know he's looking for that goal. I, I get that. And but to be fair, he did get the assist for a Adam's goal, so you, I've got to give him that. But apart from that, he, he was more frustrating than he was actually good. If that is, you know. <laughs> yeah. And, yeah, and for, and for the final player, uh, Keenan Davis. For me, he, 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 he yet again he was doing great hold up play. Yeah, and being great, being a target man and holding up the play, his passing was good, bringing other players into it. Uh, I thought it, it was a little bit quiet, uh, didn't have main, some of his chances. I don't think he had many, if any, to be honest. Uh, and it seemed like um, him and Kodji, like you said, were squabbling a little bit like that opportunity. And he wasn't in the box a lot, I thought. He wasn't, when, when crosses from Snodgrass was coming in or from El Mahamadi or, or from Adoma, there, there was really no one to attack it, and Davis is normally pretty good at that. Um, so he's probably not saying it was a bad performance, but probably the worst performance that he's had this season. But I mean, every player is going to get that. So, uh, and I fully respect that. And, and Davis is one of the best players we've had this season. So I can't slate him at all. So seven. Yeah, I've given him a seven as well. He, what, he, he was just as frustrating as Codger, to be fair. Uh, but I think that was down to... I, I think he works a lot better. I mean, he's only done really one proper game now with Codger. But yeah. he seemed to have worked a lot better with Hogan. I don't know if that's because he's had more time and, you know, with Codger being away injured and things. Maybe that's helped out him quite a lot. But, yeah, he, he was quite frustrating. He wasn't in the box as much as he usually is. And But, yeah. like I say, when Adoma... Domi should have got the second one, which was a low driven ball. He uh, he was the one that was making you know making a nuisance of himself. Or he needs to do a bit more than just be you know nuisance. He needs to be a bit more than that. Yeah, definitely. And now we go to a tough Tuesday night game against Burton, uh, and hopefully we can get another three points and keep on going. Yeah, definitely, mate. We we need we need another. We need to just keep winning now. We need to try and close this gap of the seven points now. So if you have enjoyed this video, please leave it a like, please subscribe to the channel, it really means a lot to us with your post notifications on to never miss a video. Please share this video on Facebook, Twitter, Twitter and Google Plus and however possible. And also leave your thoughts in the comment section below. From the region of Aston Villa, up the villa.